It's Monday the 28th of February 2011 and this is Photo Walkthrough episode number 142, part 2 of our two-part tutorial about Lightroom 3 picture packages. Hello and welcome back to Photo Walkthrough. Today we're going to complete our tutorial looking at Lightroom 3 and the picture packages feature there. But before we get started, let's say a quick thank you to our regular show sponsor, Mosey. As a photographer, you've got photographs that you absolutely cannot face losing. I hope you've got online backups, but if you haven't, the place to start is with mosey.com. What Mosey does is regularly back up the photos and all the other important data on your computer automatically. You install a little piece of software on your computer and it spots when the files have changed on your computer and automatically uploads them to Mosey's servers using secure encrypted connections and of course all of those files that are then on their servers are available to you from any computer in the world so if you just wanted to get at the data from somebody else's computer you could do that. Mosey is very very affordable and it's a fantastic way to protect your valuable data. You can sign up for a 15% discount by using the promo code photo when you sign up for Mosey Home or if you want to use Mosey Pro which is their professional package use the promo code photo15 to get a 15% discount there as well. Thank you very much to Mosey for supporting the show. All right let's get started with our Lightroom 3 uh, picture packages tutorial part 2. Here we go. Now if I scroll down a little bit um, we've also got a couple of extra options here. Uh, we can change the page background color if we wish. If you really wanted to have a black background, you could do that and it will use your printer ink um, printing a black background on your presumably white paper. Um, it seems like a bit of a waste of ink to me. I'm not sure I see a great use for that, but you can do that if you wish. Um, We've also got the option to add an identity plate, and if you've been using Lightroom for any period of time, you've probably got an identity plate set up, but particularly if you're using Lightroom to demonstrate images to customers, chances are you've set up your identity plate to go up here in the top left corner of, of Lightroom to brand it for your own company. Now you can use those identity plates again here in the print module to add, and you can see it's got a photo walkthrough, let's just do override color so it's all black. Um, Photo walkthrough is appearing in the corner there. That's that's my standard basic identity plate. Um, we can also edit that. Um, so let's just change the image text, the, the, the words text there to black. Let's make it 12 point. And if I hit the option and uh, hold down the option key and press enter, I think it's alt enter on the PC. Um, you can also type a second line. Now, as you can see, it's not uh, scrolling up so you can see properly, um, which is a little bit of a bug, I think, here in uh, Lightroom. But we can actually do multiple lines of text here if we wish, and we can also style individual bits of it if we wish. So if I want to make just the word photo walkthrough larger, I can do that by highlighting photo walkthrough and choosing the point size just for that bit if I wish. And we can also do the same with fonts and colors if we really wanted to get uh, uh, creative with our styling here. So I'm just going to make that photo walkthrough a little bit larger than the URL. I'm going to press OK on that and you can see now that my identity plate here at the bottom of the page has got both the photo walkthrough name and the URL which if you're selling photographs is definitely going to be something you want to do because you're going to want to uh, give people the opportunity to get back in touch with you and uh, buy more prints if they want them. Uh, so we can also with that identity plate we can drag it wherever we wish. We can put it on either page um, and we can put it uh, where we want the page and size it if we wish as well. So we can make that really look um, exactly the way we want. Uh, we've also got the options here for rendering it behind images if we wanted to do that as a really maybe sort of a watermark type of image. Um, so we can we can do that too and that will go behind the images um, and if you wanted to do that you could perhaps do uh, an opacity slider as well there. Um, and another thing you might want to do if you're doing a watermark is um, we have the option here in the identity plate editor to use a graphical identity plate and that allows us to load an image um, as the identity plate. So there's lots and lots of options here for customizing the identity plates to suit what we want. In this case I'm just going to go for about a 30% scale and I'm just going to drop it there in the corner and I think that's uh, pretty tidy um, and uh, uh, not a problem. Uh, now 
We've also got the option here to do watermarking. Now, I'm not going to go deeply into watermarking, but if you've played with Lightroom 3's new watermarking features, um, it works exactly the same as it does in all the other places in Lightroom. It is going to allow us to put a copyright notice or an image or something onto the image itself, um, and that's useful when you're uploading to the web. I don't think it's so useful when you're, when you're selling prints. Most people, when they buy a print, aren't going to want your copyright notice printed in the corner of it. So uh, if you did want to do that, that, it's there and um, we've also got another button here for cut guides and if, you t if I turn that on and off watch what happens here on the left hand page you can see lines appearing on the page that are guides that help somebody who's going to have to cut this up to line up where they're going to do the cuts that's a jolly useful feature particularly with that uh, lining things up so you do as few cuts as possible that will certainly help you do a tidier job when it comes to print, cut the pictures up um, and uh, maybe help your customers if it's your customer that's doing it um, so those are, are the main headline features I don't propose to go through actually printing it I think we can all figure out the print dialogues on our various computers but I did just want to show you how you can lay those images out for yourself um, and also that would be a fairly typical picture package layout but what if you've got one final extra credit feature um, what if you've got maybe a couple of different images of each couple and you want to be able to include uh, different images in your layout well Lightroom can do that too and we do that by using the custom package option here so if I click on custom package you can see it's giving us a similar layout but let's just let's just start again with this because you, you've probably already noticed that what we haven't got here is any images, which is a bit confusing at first. So let's drop a 4x6 on there and uh, maybe a couple of wallet size pictures. Uh, and yeah, that will stop there. And maybe a 3x7. Now, what this is going to do is, as you can see, it's added image cells without any images in them. So that might give you the clue that what we're going to do now is drag and drop our images in. So if I click an image out of the out of the film strip down here and drop it in, you can see that that goes into that cell quite nicely. And if I want to put different images on here, I can do that. I can drag and drop a variety of different images into this into these cells. Now, have you noticed what's happening here? We've now got images that overlap. Look. And the reason is that the, the custom package feature doesn't work quite the same as the picture package feature. The picture package will allow you to zoom images um, to, fill the sp to, to fill the cell, or it will leave white spaces around the edge if you turn that option off. What custom package is going to do is it's going to um, keep the ratio of the image that it prints the same as the ratio of the source image, which means it's going to choose one of the dimensions of the cell you gave it, and it's going to change the other dimension to match the ratio, the picture size ratio. Um, so in this case, those uh, smaller wallet size pictures I put on were not big enough for the three by two ratio that these photographs are uh, are actually uh, stored in. So in this case, it's made them wider, and you can see now that they overlap each other. Um, and I'm not able to get all three on a row. So that could cause you a problem, something to be aware of. Let's just see that happen again. I've chosen a big wide cell here just to demonstrate the point. Uh, obviously this is not anywhere near the ratio of the rest of our images. So if I drag and drop my image into here, you'll see it gets taller. You see that got taller to match the ratio of the image. So that's just a little gotcha, something to be aware of. Um, and as you can see here in the cells section, we haven't actually got that auto layout feature. So you will now need to go in and either manually resize these pictures or alternatively uh, delete one and move things around yourself. They do still snap nicely to guides and you can still lay things out the way you want to. But you don't have that auto layout option that you do with the picture packages feature. Okay, that's us done for uh, for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, remember, you can find more of what I do at photowalkthrough.com. I do video tutorials just like this, and they're all available for free. Um, and do please keep coming to TipScroll. As I say, I'm a big fan of TipScroll, and I would love to carry on and do a couple more video tutorials here as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.
Okay, we're all done for another week. Thank you very much for watching. Next week, we have got special coverage of Focus on Imaging 2011. This is a big photography show run here in the UK in Birmingham. I'm going to go down there with a camera and some microphones, and I'm going to talk to the people on the stands and look at any new or interesting products that are being released there at Focus this year. Should be a lot of fun. There'll be loads of shows coming out throughout the week. I hope you'll join me for that. I'll see you then. Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Please help support the show by using our sponsor's promo codes or by passing the promo codes on to your friends. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com. Photocastnetwork.com, your photography resource in the potosphere photocastnetwork.com